What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pit Mailbag here on the Post Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel and podcast network. He's Chris Carter. I'm Noah Hiles. Chris, good to be back with you here, uh, chopping it up here on the Pit Mailbag again. Absolutely. Good to have you back on the show. You had to leave me stranded last week as I was talking about which pit football coaches would stand up for me in a fight at a bar and all sorts of other crazy talk. I did say we did get a good question about uh, about the not everyone always asks about the football stadium, but they said, but what if what if I could get you on board with putting an original hot dog stand in the new stadium? And then I was like, I don't care what tear down the Pete, do whatever you got to do. Get me that stadium just to get me them hot dogs back, man. That's all I want back in my life. That would I, I'll weigh in on that uh, as well. I think that that would be a cool <laughs> thing to do in like Victory Heights. That'd be oh, these, that'd be so cool. These, you know, with all of these local businesses closing in Oakland, you have a new facility being built. How cool would that be if your concession stands were a nod to the O or all yeah. these other places that have closed recently due to the pandemic or anything else? I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, but that question wasn't asked to me. I just, you know, I, I, I thought that was a cool question as well. And uh, boo-hoo for you. You had to host one mailbag. I've, I've held down the fort <laughs> countless times without you. So you have not, not countless been. times, but like five. Yeah. But anyway. A lot. <laughs> yeah. So we're even. But we're both hey, back you're gonna now. Hold it, you're going to hold it down next week too. So. Yeah, exactly. So we're both back now here. And uh, we'll get to the questions. We'll start off. Graham wants to know, should Pitt fans worry about the program missing out on so many four-star recruits. And Carter, we talked about this in we recent did. mailbags, and the trend continues. I mean, Pitt, I, I believe now it's like, I think it's like eight in a row, I want to say. Yeah. I could go back and count. Uh, the latest being Ryan Howerton, an offensive lineman, four-star out of Maryland. Um, and I'll, I'll start with this, because I want to say, I, I, I tweeted that, I retweeted his decision the other day uh, and talked about how, you know, I just said Pitt misses out on another four-star and there were some people underneath, you know, commenting, saying, oh, you know, Pitt didn't even want that guy that bad. You know, they, they already have all these linemen. And that's true. They have linemen verbally committed. But if Howerton were to verbally commit, oh, I would have to imagine yeah. Yeah, they yeah. would be picking him ahead of some of the other guys. And that's no disrespect. That's right. just the hierarchy of recruiting. And so I would say, is it worth worrying? No, probably not. Because it's just, this is kind of shaping out to be a similar recruiting class that we've seen in recent years, which hasn't mm -hmm. been a bad thing if you're picked. Right. I'm not going to sit here and say that this team can't win with a roster full of three stars because that's what they've done the last couple of years is win games with a roster primarily built with three-star talent. Now, I think it's, it's frustrating because the hype that was being created in, in May and in June, early June, was that – this might be the year where Pitt takes the next step and yeah. they're able to get whatever three star they want and possibly a couple more four stars than they typically get, which still could happen, but it's looking like it's not going to be as big of a thing as what it could have been. Um, so I think that's where it's not necessarily worry, but perhaps a bit of di disappointment. So it, nothing's really changing here, but yes, it is a big deal for Pitt to get a four star. So when you're in the mix for this many, and you miss out on just all of them in a row, that, that's tough because these right. are guys that, and again, no disrespect to any three-star commits for Pitt or anywhere else, you earn those stars. But traditionally, the teams with the most four or five-star players tend to have the best seasons in college football. Just go look at the recruiting rankings year in and year out, and when those guys are juniors, those classes, those teams tend to win a lot of football games. So the teams with the best players – typically tend to win a lot. That's not to say that Pitt can't develop the guys that they do get. They certainly can, but I would imagine if they got higher end talent out of high school and you develop them the same way you develop some of your more reclamation project type guys, you would probably be even better. So yeah, it's not something they should worry about in my opinion. It's just, you know, not going to probably end up being the recruiting class that a lot of people did think it was going to be, which was a group that could finish in the top 15 in the country. No, let, let's also put this into perspective. One thing that we talked about even before like this recruiting period, back when they were getting their transfer portal guys, was that they were starting to get some of the guys from the Whippeal. That is already a step up from what they had right. because they wouldn't land those guys in previous years. 
But I think people got to understand it takes a lot of steps to get to where people are dreaming of being able to land those big those big names over and over and over again. And uh, and I was even kind of willing to say, all right, I'll, I want to see like how, will will they step up because. Uh, you know, they've had now two years of really good success, being in a, a bit more of a spotlight and bringing some success in some exciting games and some exciting environments. And uh, I thought I was I thought that was a big question is could they start to bring in more? Uh, and they did bring in more more than they normally do. But it's still, you know, it's it kind of on pace with some of their just better years that they've had under Pat right. Narduzzi instead of pushing the limit of what they've been able to bring in, like you said. So I, I'm with you like. It's not necessarily disappointing. It's more so kind of like a humbling, like, okay, so they're still at this level. I, I think it's still going to come down to Noah. They need to get back to the ACC championship. They need to get in a major bowl game. They need to win a major bowl game and and and, set, and like have another big year like they did with Kenny Pickett, which I know is asking a whole lot because that was an amazing year with so many things that went right for them. And it's tough to replicate that. But if they want to take that next step, they need more years like it. It's just maintaining the pace, in my opinion. It's it's getting to an ACC title game once every three, four years. It's mm -hmm. playing in notable bowl games that are past, you know, the first two weeks of December, close to New Year's Day, if not New Year's Day. It's it's routinely being ranked and playing in primetime games, which this team is going to be playing in a lot of primetime games this cup upcoming season. And it's also Having a lot of guys' names called on draft day, that helps. That too. That's been the case the last couple of years. But let's see what they can do now that that crop that won that ACC championship, now that most of those guys are gone, let's see what they can do with the dudes who were reserves on that team or who weren't even around for that ACC championship team. Are they going to be able to do that, or was that just one great wave of, of talent that, right. that happened to come to Pitt at the same time? We'll find out. And another thing is it's continuing to develop an NIL collective. I, I, I don't have this on amazing authority, but you would have to assume that, you know, a, another thing that a program like Michigan who beat out Pitt for a four star or Penn state or mm -hmm. other programs like that probably have over Pitt now is they might be able to offer more through their collective to incoming guys. And I'm, again, that's not, that's not a hundred percent official. I don't know that I, I don't go to every single recruit and say, Tell me what amount of money each program said they would give you if you committed. That, I don't do that. No one does. Um, but you have to imagine that that's probably something that plays a factor in at least some of these things, too. It's getting better in all areas. And that's happening. It's just got to continue to happen. And Pitt will go from being one of the hats on the table that wasn't selected to one of the hats that is. So I think it's just going to take more time. Mm -hmm. Dalton wants to know, could you see Pitt landing any Northwestern players? that hit the transfer portal due to the head coaching change? That's an interesting question. Um, it's it's so close to camp. You really never see any head coaching changes yeah. this close to training camp, right? I, and Big Ten Media Day, I think, is like – or Media Week, whatever they want to call it. I'm pretty sure that's like next week for them. That's going to be a mess in up. general uh, for Northwestern in the Big Ten – um, but when you're when you're dealing with all of that and you're going into camp with a new coach and all that, I, I don't know. I, I, I'd like to think most coaches ideally want to have their roster set heading into camp. But if you're Pitt and a good receiver from Northwestern hits the transfer portal and it shows interest, yeah, I think you got to at least give them a look. It's just I don't know if anyone really has a plan on how to recruit in the transfer portal in late July because those right. situations – don't really happen that often where a coach is fired and guys who were going to be starters and didn't have any intention to transfer might be considering that now because of a coaching change. Yeah. I think part of the struggle here, like you said, is like, like you need to be on someone's case. Like for example, Donovan McMillan, he said when he first, when he hit the, as soon as he hit the transfer portal, Corey Sanders was in his, right. in his phone with text messages you need to be on those guys. And you're right. I'm not so sure that Pitt is going to be chasing down these type of guys, especially because they've recruited a lot to the wide receiver position. Now they could be ready for certain guys to, to, to fall, but there's just so many players to keep track of. And then when a random coaching situation happens, it changes things up. Um, you know, I, I, I think Northwestern has a couple three-star receivers that are out there, a three-star quarterback uh, who are, who are in the portal and still haven't picked a place, but 
you know, at, at the same time, I think Pitt has a lot of their talented guys and you know at receiver currently on, currently on the roster right now that they're waiting to see there. So I mean, they'll they might reach out, they might see some things there, but you know, some of these guys are Texas and some of these guys are Cali and Florida. You know, there's going to be other guys that are jumping in, jumping in there. And if if uh, if this if they don't have that, that kind of inside track on them, I, I have a hard time seeing they're going to pull that off. That's exactly what I wanted to add. It's if you don't already have a, an established relationship with some of these yeah. guys, I don't I don't think it's really feasible to be able to go and get someone that can help you this season. You might be able to steal some of their verbal commits for 2024. Right. That might be more realistic, but mm-hmm. unless if you like Corey Saunders, I'm pretty sure was involved in McMillan's recruitment, or if he wasn't, someone on Pitt staff was when they were recruiting him out of uh, where did he go to high school? Um, Peters Township. Mm-hmm. You know, they they had someone on staff that said, "This is who this kid is. Here's his parents. Here's the whole spiel. We were this close to getting him beforehand." If, if you don't have anyone on your staff, if your program hasn't had a relationship with these players on Northwestern, the active players, then I don't really see how you have a chance to just slide in and build that relationship and say, Hey, I just met you. And this is crazy. No, I'm not going to finish that lyric, Mm. but uh, in two weeks, come play, come, come change your whole life, move to Pittsburgh and join this team that you know nothing about. That's just got to be difficult. So yeah, I would, I would say probably not, but I mean, it's hard to predict any type of thing when it's involving transfers in college football uh, in today's day and age. So We'll move forward now. Addy wants to know which player on each side of the football has the most to prove this training camp. I really hmm. like this question. It's a good question. Um, you can start, Chris. Hmm. I feel like on offense, Kanate Mumfield. Okay. Because when he was brought in as a transfer last year, he looked really explosive. But then it didn't click with him and Keaton Slovis, and, and you could give the Keaton Slovis like, okay, that that's that'll put like an asterisk on the year because he wasn't that good of a quarterback for Pitt last season. But if Kanate Mumfield doesn't have a good year this year, there's gonna be a lot of questions, and like he was kind of foreseen as like the next two years were gonna be his years to kind of cut loose and get open and make some big plays in the secondary. If he doesn't do that this year, I, I think that puts a lot of question, a lot of questions in doubt as far as what his place will be in this receiving core in the years moving forward and if he wants to you know be a big name wide receiver kind of like how jordan addison was for, for the panthers uh you know or a guy that goes in the top you know on the first two days of the draft he needs to start stepping up this year i think that he there, there's a little bit of pressure on him the, the guy on defense will go with is dayon hayes and not because dayon hayes i think is in a bad position but it's just like you know, Dayon Hayes has been this heralded four four star guy, um, and like, look, I think that he's talented and he's extremely good. But I also think that he's he hasn't had a chance to start up until right. this year. So it this is his one chance to go out there and and show NFL scouts I'm the tr- the, the, the all the stuff you ever read about me, it, all of it's real. And if he goes out and d- does that, maybe he makes himself a, a top, you know a, a you know a day two day one draft pick something like that. But if he doesn't. It's gonna it's gonna cast a lot of doubt and it's gonna ruin what's a slim opportunity for him to make that happen because he really only has what this season. Yeah, and to build on the Hayes thing too, I mean, this is a program that stuck by him when yes. some off the field stuff happened last year. And you know, there's there's a lot of different stuff we've heard as to what actually went down and he wasn't charged for much from it, as opposed to other things that have happened with other pit athletes and everything. And he was back on the field, I believe, like two weeks after that incident. But that was a that's an off the field incident where, you know, when that stuff happens, regardless of what you actually did, what you actually didn't, we've seen that in sports plenty of times where a program could just say, not worth it. We've got other talented people at your position. I don't care what you did, you're gone. And I think that the fact that you everything that you mentioned, Chris, and the fact that, you know, he was involved in something, it's it's his time to step up. And this program yeah. stuck by him and he stuck by it with waiting his turn. It's it's just time for him. Another guy that I think a lot of people have been waiting to become something more than what he's been is Bengali Kamara. This was Mm. last year was when I started covering the team. That was the guy that everyone said, oh, he's going to have the breakout season. And he was a solid player, but he wasn't, he wasn't, he he didn't have a breakout season. No. Right. And I think that if you watch the film and you get to the back end of that season, you'll see a player that significantly improved. Where mm-hmm. in the beginning of the season, especially the first couple of games, he was 
wasn't that great. He was actually struggled a lot, I would say, mm -hmm. but he became a pretty solid player toward the end of the year. But this is a team, especially a defense, that's in desperate need of a superstar. And Dayon Hayes is one of the candidates for that. And I think Bengali Kamara is another guy um, where the coaches have been waiting for it, the fans have been waiting for it, and even the people who cover the team. We see the athleticism, we see the size, and we hear all about it. And now I think he's he's entering a point where he's got to make it known in camp here where you know this, this is going to be my year, there's no doubt. Um, and then on the offensive side of the ball, my pick is going to be the most important player on the team. That's the quarterback, Phil Dracovic. Mm. Quarterback play held this team back from probably winning a couple more football games last year. This was the guy that Pitt fans have wanted since he was 15 years old. And they finally have him. And it's his third team in five years. It's his final year at the collegiate level. There's a lot to gain if you're Phil Dracovic from a great season. There's also a lot to lose. And if this doesn't go well for Pitt, you look at it, that's back-to-back -back years you've gone to the transfer portal and you got a quarterback from another Power 5 school that didn't work out. And mm -hmm. that's that's a lot of pressure. And at the on the flip side, if it does work out, it shows that you know the slowest thing was an anomaly and they do know how to evaluate quarterback talent for Signetti's offense. So I think there's a lot of pressure here. Every player that I've talked to raves about Phil's leadership. Uh, they're very confident. It seems like the offense is going to have a lot more confidence in itself as a team this year. Um, but that's easy to say in spring ball. Let's see how mm -hmm. it goes in camp when it's really challenging and the games aren't too far away and it starts to get real. Let's see how QB1 looks. I think that he just has a lot to prove because, again, there's so much riding on the season for him and there's so much riding on the season for Pitt because of him. So those are my two guys that I'm looking at. We'll move on now. Liz wants to know, which Pitt fall sport will have the most success in 2023? I love this question. Volleyball. I'm assuming women's volleyball. I don't think men's volleyball is a fall sport. No. They uh, don't, they don't have that. Women's volleyball, men's soccer, or the field? That's a great question. I'll, I'm going to take the answer that I think is probably a cop-out, but I think it's the truth. I'm going women's volleyball. I think yeah. they can win a national championship this year. I, they lost some senior talent, um, but they're pretty active in the portal. They have their best player coming back. I, I'm pretty optimistic about them having the chance to get to at least the Final Four again. Um, and, you know, I – think pit football will be decent i don't think they'll be in the college football playoff this year men's soccer uh probably a decent shot to get there but i just think volleyball if i think pit women's volleyball is going to be the next team at pit to win a national championship i don't know if that's going to be this fall or next fall or five ten years down the line whenever but i just think that's the program that's the most elite right now on the campus so i'm going to roll with them yeah, I'm right with you. Pit volleyball, uh, they, they did lose Courtney Bazario, and she was yeah. huge. She was their top scorer. She 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 killed a lot of points. But uh, they got a lot of people who were essential to last year's run. Lexis Akeos is back. She's she's in her last year. Valeria, Valeria Vasquez Gomez is back. She's a redshirt senior. You still got Cat Flood. You still got Juliana Dalton, who was hurt up until some of their last games they had last year. Rachel Fairbanks, who really yeah. came on strong last year. And they got back Chiamaka and Wakolo, who was thought to maybe be lost, but she's back as a grad student for another year. They've got depth. They've got experience. They still got head coach Dan Fisher. They've got a lot of talent, and I think that they're going to be doing just fine. Yeah, I was gonna say when you when you name the two uh, Valeria and uh, Che is that they call mm -hmm. her. Um, I mean, those are two key players. I like I said, they lost a couple of players, but I know, and I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I put as much effort into covering the volleyball team as I do for football and basketball. That's because that's just how my job is designed. Yeah, that's how. Um, it's how but yeah. you you monitor it, and yeah, they've been pretty active. Any team with Rachel Fairbanks on it is one worth betting on, in my opinion. She's yeah, one, they, probably the best she, kid athlete that we covered this past year. Her, she, or she, Courtney. Was, she came she came on really strong going into yeah. the later part of the season. And if she picks up where she left off, look out. They're going to yeah. have a lot of talent to take on some of those top teams yet again in the country. Last question. We back, we're back on the football train here, uh, and it comes from Drew. Will it be a problem if Pitt doesn't get a verbal commitment from a quarterback before camp starts? Carter. I don't know if it's a problem this year. They have Phil. They have uh, Christian – uh Veyer, and they got Ty Diefenbach as a as a young commit to like have in the system. I do think next year will be that year because Veyer's 
you know, I think he's the guy that's going to take over, you know, right after Phil. And there's a lot of confidence in Bayer for what he's what he's been able to show. But they do. I do think they need a young guy in the system who's going to start to develop at least by next year. And maybe Diefenbach can be that guy. But I think that they want to get another young arm in there to compete with Diefenbach. So it's so they at least have some push, some push back and forth there and some competition behind the guys who are kind of set to start the next two years for the Panthers. I just feel personally that this recruiting class is very heavy in areas that Pitt's already good at. Mm. Um, there's a lot of offensive linemen. There's a lot of defensive linemen. There's a lot of players in the secondary. There's a lot of defensive players and offensive linemen, honestly, all together. And, you know, there's the best player in the class might be a receiver. Um, but aside from that, you just look, yeah, there's, there's a running back here and there. But the, the splash guys seem to be in areas where they've traditionally recruited well. Um, and quarterback, I think it would be nice if the coaching staff knew, well, if they could get Trevor Jackson or Julian Duggar or whoever, maybe someone that we don't even know has an offer yet. Um, just knowing it's like, all right, we got our, we got our quarterback for the class of 2024. We have one less thing to worry about as we're starting camp. Cause mm -hmm. the, the, I know that recruiting during the season is nothing new, but being able to at least get a verbal from a key position in your recruiting class during the summer is huge. And I, I, it, coaches might say different, but just think of it as a task list. If you check off an important task before you go into a busy time of your life, that feels good. Doesn't it? Yeah. I would have to imagine that would be the same thing recruiting. They, they, they're still in the mix for a couple of quarterbacks. Get, just getting one of them. Maybe it's not even the first guy on their list, but knowing it's like, Hey, at, at least we will have quarterback depth barring an un or a, a decommitment you know being able to build that they don't want to have to have to scramble and try to find another quarterback like they did right before signing day last year i just don't see that being something that the coaching staff says yeah that won't be a problem i'm, I'm sure they would rather just get that handled now so that would be my answer to that question carter that's all we got any final thoughts uh, just that we're getting closer to football season, just a few weeks away here uh, from uh, from from Pitts camp open Pitts camp open up. Actually, I think two weeks. Yeah, am I, am I, am I jump on the gun there. Yeah. I think we're two weeks away. Um, yeah, so it's kind of crazy to think that we are already back to this point in the, uh, of of the season, but uh, shows you how quick the year goes. And I'm excited to get back out there. I'm going to enjoy these next couple weeks before we do because I do enjoy some uh, some nice peace and quiet. But I'm also excited to get back out there and see what this team has to offer. Absolutely, same here. Next week for the mailbag, uh, I will be probably recording it live from or not. It won't be done live but i will be recording Do it from, live from charlotte north carolina for acc kickoff where i will be all week covering uh, all things pit down there got a lot of fun stories planned uh, a lot of fun questions to ask everybody in attendance so uh if you're going to submit questions for next week's mailbag maybe make them uh acc related acc football related so i could poke around get some info for you guys for that mailbag until then hit that subscribe all button if you haven't already and keep tuning into the post gazette sports now youtube channel and podcast network for all of your pittsburgh sports coverage take care thank you for checking out this content from post gazette sports if you like the video please like it and subscribe to our youtube channel if you enjoyed it on apple podcasts please rate us five stars on apple podcasts for six months of digital access to post gazette.com for just six dollars click the link down in the description